All right, uh, so we can get started as people start rolling in more. Uh, like I said, if you can go ahead and drop a comment in that main tweet, uh, that also helps get eyes in here too. I'll pin it to the top also. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them. Any comments about Melcomina, if you've used Melcomina, I just kind of want to hear from people because I don't hear a ton about it unless I actively like do it. Like I did a, uh, a poll and we'll kind of go over those numbers and stuff too. Uh, but yeah, Blue Ship, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Yes, so my name is Sienna. I'm a marketing director here at Blue Shirt. And uh, I'm here with Igor, who is our CTO. And I would like to ask him to give an introduction for Blue Shirt. Yep, thank you. So Blue Shift is a decentralized exchange based on automated market maker and the principle of portfolios instead of pairs that you can find on many other indexes like Uniswap. Pairs are more capital efficient. That why, that's why we are using them. And also we have several innovations that you cannot find in any other DeFi project. Like we use virtual pairs and we have low impermanent loss and uh, we have portfolio management and single-sided liquidity provisioning and so on. And of course, the main innovation that we are now working on is our cross-chain protocol that will allow swaps between different blockchains without bridging. I'll be happy to introduce all this in more details, of course. Yeah, we'll definitely dive into those things, but if more people want to introduce themselves, they can do it. Well, that's it. That's the two of us that are present in this space on behalf of uh, it. We also have Ben here, and Ben is our good friend working in Mokovada. Ben, do you want to introduce yourself as well? Yeah, I'll just say hello. My name is Ben. I'm the social media lead uh, for DC Spark, uh, the core contributor to Mokovada, and uh, we're just really excited with what Blue Shift is doing. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Ben, for coming up here. Uh, so, yeah, I I checked out uh, Milkamina like a while back, and I go on there every once in a while, and I try to keep up on it. Um, I just did a survey on it, so I kind of want to go through those and just kind of feel how everybody's feeling about uh, Milkamina in general. Uh, because from my survey, it was really interesting to watch because I have, you know, a lot of followers that are mostly into DeFi, right? Uh that's just kind of like what my main focus is, I guess I would say. So I had quite a few people, like when it first went out on the survey, if I asked if you tried Milkomeda, the yeses were like overwhelming. But as soon as it started going out of my circle, it started turning into, you know, more no's. And now it ended, the poll ended at 47.9% at yes, 52.1% at no. Uh, and then I, my next question on there was like, if you had used it, was it difficult to use? 28% said yes, 72% said no. Uh, what did you use it for? DeFi was the number one. Uh, when my thing first started, bridging asset was number one until it started spreading out to more people. So that was interesting too. Uh, and yeah, so that was my main survey. So I was curious what what you all are seeing on your side. Igor, why don't you tell us what's your experience working with Mukamada? Yeah, for from my side, of course, it's more developer's experience and uh, project uh, crea creator experience. And what I can say is that Rukumida is a very profound layer to blockchain, which is absolutely EVM compatible, which is possible, which makes possible to launch DeFi projects the same in the same way as you can do in any other EVM compatible blockchain. What is uh, good with Milkomeda and what is unique that it is a layer two for non-EVM chains like Cardano and currently Algorand. That that's why uh, BlueShift and other protocols that are initially EVM based uh, they can target Cardano also. And by bridging Cardano native tokens to Milkomeda, you can participate in uh, uh, 
for example, blue shift portfolios and uh, earn on blue shift farms with high APRs. All this uh, uh, with a common EVM user experience. And then the result can be bridged back to new comida. And uh, adding to this, uh, it uh, works pretty fast and it is very cheap. And uh, you can find uh, here all the necessary DeFi primitives. Uh, and you can also work with Cardano assets, like in our Cardano index that we presented uh, a bit ago. Yeah, I do like the website. I know I hadn't checked it out in a little bit and I got on there and saw like you can like bridge like right inside there, which is pretty cool because you just can connect that Flint wallet and then just kind of like flip flop back and forth between Milk Ada and Ada. And I think that's great. Um, and then the main thing that just got added right was this Cardano portfolio. And I mean, I, I got I to see exactly what's all in there. Yes, let me tell you a few words about that. So basically, a lot of people that are not familiar with crypto space uh, had still heard something about index funds. And just in the same manner how index funds innovated the stock market in the 80s, liquidity portfolios are innovating DeFi today. Because as we have mentioned, uh, investing in the portfolio decreases fragmentation because you do not need to have um, same tokens across different pairs. Instead, you have a portfolio with all the tokens in it uh, based on some particular criteria. In this case, we have the Cardano index, right? For all the Cardano tokens. Uh, then it allows uh, trading against aggregated liquidity, which improves the chemical efficiency. It uh, reduces slippage, it reduces impermanent loss, and overall contributes to increased capital efficiency. But all these technicalities are better be asked and explained by Igor. And I'm here to tell you more about the Cardano Index. Cardano Index is the project, piloting project of creating the first of its kind ecosystem index as a collection of the best projects of the whole blockchain. So it all started with validating the need of whether or not the Cardano community needs its own index. And some of you may remember that uh, earlier in summer this year, we had asked the Cardano community to help us um, choose the perfect CNT portfolio. And the campaign that we launched had very high level of engagement that had actually validated uh, the need uh, because we had half a million of impressions, we had thousand comments, one and a half thousand retweets, almost 5,000 likes. So that and all that without airdrops, with no rewards promised, right? You don't really see those uh, metrics often. Um, Subcritical, have you heard of this campaign in summer or have you not? <clears throat> have I heard of what exactly? Of the campaign when we were asking the whole Konami community of what are your favorite projects? Yeah, I think I remember seeing a bit of it like pop up and people were saying some stuff. Uh, but I don't know. It's always so hard on like Twitter with like these campaigns and like who they reach. Yeah, I mean, this was a big uh, test for us as well. But we do want to believe that an uh, initiative like this uh, should be created for the community and together with the community. So this was our best uh, way, of, uh, our, our our approach to address the to community as a step one and to see which projects do they suggest. So as a result. We got about uh, 50 to 60 different projects suggested to us by a wider Cardano community. And among them, there were all sorts of projects. Uh, there were some of them that we never heard about, like Zombie or something like that, you know? <laughs> uh, we were wondering what this is all about. So we then took a good few months to undergo a proper validation process where we as a team split into groups and we've been doing qualitative, quantitative and uh, key opinion leader type of analysis. If you want, I can dig a bit deeper in the criteria that we applied. If uh, if you want, so uh, we can talk about it. So tell me. Yeah, that'd be interesting to kind of hear the criteria you went through to pick which ones were good or not, because obviously 
when it comes to any kind of voting, like sometimes people can, you know, either fake votes or just like pay people to vote. Like, how did you work all that out? Uh, sure. I'm going to tell you something about that. So we looked at the projects that uh, were suggested to us by the community and we analyzed them based on their financial performance results. For example, we looked at their price performance, we looked at their uh, market capitalization, other circul circulation, we looked at uh, all the other varieties, uh, trading volume, you know, all just to see whether there is uh, any uh, solid foundation behind the project, also whether there is uh, enough uh, liquidity that is staked elsewhere to kind of show that this project is established and not just, uh, you know, there were many amazing projects that were suggested to us and that we happily uh, spoke with, but they were recently lodged and they had under 100,000 liquidity staked elsewhere. So we thought, no, for the purpose of this uh, index, it's very important for us to have established projects with a uh, sufficient amount of this liquidity st staked. So this was uh, in regard to the quantity for criteria. And for the qualitative, we looked at the Okay, so uh, where is the project? Um, um, what's the type of the project? Uh, whether it's listed. Uh, what about the team? Is the team doxed? Then we looked at uh, roadmap. Is it uh, mentioned? Can we check it? Is it being tracked? Is it being followed? Then we looked at uh, use cases. We also analyzed communities. We looked at each and every project and we looked at their Discord communities. Telegram, Twitter. Well, I hope these neighbors of mine don't bother you. <laughs> they do bother me. So we looked at uh, their use cases, roadmap, our uh, utility, uh, where, whether it's tracked, um, just to also have an idea whether there is some some uh, thinking uh, behind this project by a uh, broader team. And uh, that's how we've selected a top 20 projects I have to say that among them was Ardana. Now that with all the fuss that's happening in the in the space, but it was kind of hard to tell that a project like this, with so much investments and the reputable partners, would just uh, finish its operations. So it was quite surprising to see. But uh, other than that, there were twenty projects that we called the ones that uh, passed our validation, and. Uh, were also highly uploaded by the community. And I can name them. Uh, those are the projects. It was, I'm just going to name the tokens, okay? So it's Kofi, uh, EMP, WRT, Edgix, Min, Drip, Snata, Milk, Yumi, Adana, WMT, AADA, and Maker, C3, Revel, LQ, Pavia, Melt, Sunday, and Wi Fi. So these were the top 20 projects that we invited for a conversation to take to a next step where we then spoke to them about what's their strategy, what's their mission, uh, whether they want to go cross-chain, whether they want to tap into other ecosystems and uh, overall, like, do we have a fit as uh, for potential partnership? And as a result, uh, we finalized the negotiation space and uh, happy to present that the newly formed Cardano Index is uh, representing four tokens. Among them, besides Blues, there is Cornucopias, and Maker, and White Finance. So these uh, tokens you already may see in uh, in the Cardano Index on the Blue Ship Dex if you go to our app. Awesome. Yeah, you, those are the ones I see in here. It says Blues, WiFi, and Maker, and Kopi. Yeah. So. Uh, so what exactly is going on here then? Like, so somebody can just go on here and how do they, how do they get in on this Cardano index? Well, yeah, so we are now working on the cross-chain protocol that will allow cross-chain functionality to this portfolio. However, prior to that, I would like to mention a few interesting things of what this index is actually representing. So as you can imagine. This portfolio will have a sub product, so called LP token. And this index LP token price dynamics effectively represents a unique Cardano ecosystem performance indicator. So, for any person 
that will be interested, that is external to Cardano, and that is interested to know how the things are going at a glance. Now, that person may just look at the LP token price dynamics to see how is the uh, Cardano ecosystem going uh, with the uh, pre-selected, carefully crafted projects in its portfolio. And uh, in uh, two weeks from now, I believe, you could correct me if I'm wrong, we are going to be launching on more analytics that will also uh, make it easier for anyone to have a look at the LP token price performance. Igor, is it coming in two weeks? Yeah, that's right. We are currently in the final stage of testing and very soon we will launch uh, the analytics dashboard, which will have charts and uh, detailed information about our portfolios and their performance. And also, of course, there will be charts of LP token price that can be used as a, a special stock or crypto set indices that you can watch and see how ecosystems are performing, like Cardano ecosystem, for example. Uh -huh. Awesome. I will um, ask you to comment a little bit more in a bit about the cross-chain protocol and what it's going to give to all the Cardano users. But first, I would like to say that actually the problem that we are solving is the problem of fragmentation between the different blockchains. And our cross-chain protocol, as well as our indexes, portfolios, is our answer towards the promise of Tab3 to connect all the various disconnected bits. Because we do believe that the mass adoption may not happen until there is an easy way to move your assets across different chains. And BlueShift's cross-chain protocol will allow for trading between chains without the need for bridging. And effectively, BlueShift will provide Cardano investors with exposure to the other chains, as well as it will be bringing new users through the exposing the Cardano index to the other ecosystems uh, to Cardano. And now, having said that, I'd like to ask Igor to comment on the whole scope of work and potential of the cross-chain protocol that we are working on. Right. Uh, you may know that uh, maybe next year will be the year of cross-chain protocols because many uh, projects are now aiming at allow cross-chain swaps and the uh, managing of cross-chain assets. That's also true for BlueShift. And we aim at making a protocol that will make uh, cross-chain swaps fast and cheap and, of course, secure. And we have our unique innovative idea that uh, is specific to our solution uh, because we do not just build some blockchain, inter-blockchain communication protocol, but we move all the logic of BlueShift protocol of our portfolios to a special settlement layer that we call loose chain that uh, effectively will be our own blockchain based on Cosmos SDK. And there, uh, the logic of BlueShift portfolios uh, is implemented. And uh, this helps us to build uh, so-called cross-chain portfolios that have consistent view over all the blockchains that are connected. So uh, for many assets, you can have liquidity in different blockchains like USDT token, for example, can have native liquidity in several blockchains like Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain and others. And also it can have some wrapped tokens on other blockchains. So in BlueShift cross-chain portfolios, all this liquidity will be aggregated and presented as a one virtual portfolio where you can see all the liquidity in all the connected blockchains together. And when people will make swaps, they will be able to use all this aggregated liquidity in every swap uh, because of our virtual pairs, which is one of the basic innovations in, inside BlueShift protocol. So uh, when you do swaps, cross-chain swaps in BlueShift, you use all the liquidity uh, and therefore you have the lowest possible price slippage because the liquidity is aggregated. And of course, you can swap assets from one blockchain to another without any bridging. For example, you can directly swap ADA to ALGO, for example, uh, between no commons chains. 
and this is not this will not involve any bridging and therefore any wrapped assets and the same will be true for for example cardano native tokens that we have in cardano index so any of these tokens will be able to swap against any other set on any other blockchain so for example you can trade wi-fi or nmaker to algo or even either in the future and uh, this will be fast almost as fast as local as local transactions and very cheap and the good news is that we are now finishing the development and very soon uh, the test that version of this protocol will be live and uh, in a short time after this we will also launch the mainnet version interesting yeah because i saw a lot of a lot of the people who were commenting on my uh my poll were saying that they were worried about bridges and things like that so this keeps people's capital a lot safer then yes because we do not uh, actually uh, add any new bridging all the assets stay in the blockchains that they are added and they stay native the only thing we do is that we allow swaps like taking assets in one blockchain and releasing the resulting assets in other blockchain. And because of loose chain, where all the transactions will be secured by our validators, this will be secure and robust. So the funds will not get lost inside these cross-chain transactions. Okay, so all this will be done inside BlueShift with BlueShift's validators? Yeah. Uh, that's right. Uh, we'll build our own validator network. And uh, now we are preparing uh, conditions and proposals for our validators that will be able to earn on uh, cross-chain fees uh, in our Blues tokens, which will be a native token for the Blues chain. And also, uh, they will be able to earn our rewards in the yield pools that are already available so in general it will be a very competitive proposal for validators who want to support our project interesting okay so people will be able to try to sign up to be a validator for blue Shift? yeah at some point of time of course of course we will start from our partners to build the first validator network and then uh, it will be open for everybody as it is a decentralized solution. All right. Yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, but as for now, we just have these indexes that are on blue ship. And then I also see that there is like farming available. Like once you get in an index. That's right. Every portfolio currently has a corresponding farm where LP tokens of this portfolio can be staked and the uh, uh, blues are earned as rewards for staking these LP tokens. And we have our so-called smart minting system that allows us to maintain high APRs even in the current market conditions uh, because we accumulate the rewards in several accounts for every user and release only the first part of the rewards, but all the rewards are accrued and calculated. So when the protocol reaches certain TVL goals or TVL levels, all the rewards will be automatically released by the smart contracts. So uh, that is why you know, we have high APRs and not very high inflation or no inflation at all. All right. Yeah. Uh, I feel like Blue Shift is doing a lot of stuff. I always hear, uh, I don't know, I haven't heard much from other Milkamata DeFi projects as much. And I know OCamFi, I think, is where you kind of started. Uh, so you've definitely been one of the OCamFi ones I've seen doing doing great things and actually innovating. Yeah, that's right. Uh, they also have a project uh, named uh, OCamX. Um, and uh, actually, we are two... Uh, most uh, biggest projects on the Ucomeda C1. Currently, Blue Shift is uh, slightly higher in the uh, score table, and we are number one in the Ucomeda C1. And uh, of course, we are number one in the Ucomeda A1. But OCAMX is the next after us. 
by the way, here I see Sebastian is here. Uh, I believe uh, it's a CTO of uh, this is Park and uh, Milkoda. Sebastian, maybe you also want to join as one of the speakers. Yeah, because I saw that uh, the algorithm got added, and I know uh, Milkamana was talking about those a lot. So is there like a version on like Algorand that I can use of uh, BlueShift also? Right, of course. It is available for about a month, I think. And uh, you have constantly growing liquidity there. And uh, just today, we launched a new portfolio backed by our partner multi-chain uh, that bridged several stable coins to Milkomeda A1 on Algorand. And uh, now we have a portfolio from these tokens and uh, these stable coins can be traded on, on Milkomeda Algorand A1. And of course, uh, you can add liquidity and earn in the farms also there. Awesome. Yeah, because I see I see some people down here. I see like Jay Crypto. Uh, Jay and I always talk about, you know, uh, you know, cross-chain and how that's getting larger and especially with different uh, L1s coming out, I mean, different L2s are connecting in and then, you know, like everything is just kind of, as uh, AOS said, so like Jacob from the other, uh, hashtag layerverse. So we're just having all these layers that are finally like connecting and like building their own things. And obviously we've seen with like gaming where gaming chains are kind of building their own like chain to actually work. And then you can come back to the layer one and actually like settle things there. Uh, so I don't know. I feel like for me, Will Common is doing a lot of things that I'm going to like, like it's just going to be natural in the future. And I think it's building all that out. Uh, but a lot of people just don't really talk about Mokamana, and I think they're just mostly like scared and plus any kind of new technology or just kind of like, do I want to learn something new? I'd rather stay. So yeah, any way we can get more people to try these out, I think is great just to kind of figure out uh, how to make it easier for people. Yep, because uh, we have several bridges uh, as our partners on both Mokamana A1 and C1, like Seller and Multichain. And also there is native bridge uh, that allows bridging assets from layer one networks like Cardano and Algorand. So actually it's not so hard to start using new code that just uh, you need some to bridge some assets. Then uh, all the protocols there are accessible using the well-known and commonly used MetaMask wallet, for example. Uh, which you can find on many other blockchains. So it's common user experience, I think. Yeah, I think it was just like a different thing for Cardano people, because a lot of us, I think, weren't using MetaMask. I know I was, and I know like Jay was, because he was on like Binance Smart Chain with me doing stuff over there, and uh, also like Ethereum and things like that. Uh, but I think with Cardano people, uh, maybe it was like a newer experience to use MetaMask and maybe they just didn't want to get another one. But it seems like everything's connecting so easy now. Like, especially like I said on your app, I can just like swap over my milk ADA to ADA and back and forth like right there and then still do my DeFi stuff right in one website instead of having like open out my Flint wallet and then like change it over and get back on my MetaMask and all that stuff. So as long as you have both of those connected, it's just a quick swap. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We tried to make the experience as simple as possible for the users, for Cardano users especially. Yeah. So just today I saw a nice post on our Twitter by Cardano News Network, uh, where this user had draw, had written, after the Nomad hack, I stopped playing around on Nocomeda as much. Yesterday though, I had to send some agent over to Mint and stay in a studio to Balkaneers, whatever it is. Uh, while I was there, I played on Blue Shift, uh, which is pretty cool. What really struck me though was how easy it is to move ADA to the C1 chain. Every wallet I use supports simply sending it to your Melcomada wallet address. And in my opinion, that's incredible for adoption of layer twos and side chains. Great, great work from DC Spark and the wallet providers integrating. Yeah, it's great because I see what Nami, Flint, uh, Card Wallet, Eternal, uh, Typen, and Yorai. So all those are all supported that you can just kind of bridge it over right there in the app. 
Right. Yeah, exactly. We yeah, believe in the connectivity and interoperability, and we try to do our best uh, with starting with the EVM layer and contributing to connecting different chains and making the user journey easier with every step of our development. Ben, did you want to add something? Yeah, I was just going to say yeah, that um, the easier that we can make it for people, the better um, it is for adoption. And um, for people who are used to using other networks, it is a lot easier because um, it's really no different than um, bridging your assets to some other network. All right, and then we did reach the half an hour mark already, so I'm going to open up for questions from the community. I'm sure people are tired of hearing me talk. Uh, so go ahead and come up and you can ask some questions. And it looks like we already got one. Manny, go ahead. Why is uh, Manny the investor? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you all right. All right, cool. Um, yeah, I was. I had something to add as far as like um, using Milkamina and uh, I, I've also used other chains. I've been using Ethereum um, and I'm, you know, more adventurous because, you know, I'm just... Uh, creating content for my users to kind of uh, kind of break through the wall of being afraid to try new things. And I'm familiar with MetaMask, so uh, I, I was okay, but I did run into a lot of my followers had issue um, with starting because having to, in the beginning, you know, go from Flint to MetaMask, and then back then there wasn't really a, a sure way to get your assets back to Cardano. And I was wondering... Um, do you guys have a way to stay within Flint so that you don't have to use MetaMask or is that still a requirement? That's definitely something that um, the Flint team is working on um, is adding EVM compatibility. So it, it is on our roadmap and it's something we're working on. Okay, good, good. I think that will uh, that will make, make it easier to, to onboard users, especially Cardano native folks. Um, also, um, what is the ideal candidate for a validator? Is there is this something um, that would that would be open to like stake pool operators on Cardano? Uh, and and what is the barrier to entry if that is not the case? And just to clarify, uh, you mean the validators of Milkomida, right? Uh, no, the, a validator for BlueShift. Uh, yeah, for Blue Shift, uh, it's a bit uh, different question. Uh, these validators uh, will not uh, be directly connected to Cardano because uh, we will have our own Blue Chain based, based on Cosmos SDK. So, of course, Cardano uh, validators can also uh, participate in Blue's validation, but it is different software. Uh, and it will re require our blue shift validator nodes to be set up and uh, some blues tokens uh, actually is cardano native token but uh, it should be staked in blues chain not in cardano okay uh what, what do you have an like an idea as far as the cost to a barrier to entry for this is it is it you know hundreds of thousands of dollars tens millions of course, no. Uh, the uh, Cosmos nodes uh, are rather lightweight, so the resources required for the operation will not be too high because uh, this loose chain will only hold uh, blue shift internal transactions, so there will be not so much uh, impact on the data storage and so on. And uh, the staking amount, at least for the beginning, will not be high. You're thinking uh, of something about uh, maybe ten thousand dollars or something like this. Okay, awesome. And my my last question uh, is around bridges. I noticed that you guys have Seller listed as a partner uh, on the on the website. Uh, will you be handling? The seller token will be will, will that be added to your platform uh, and have the ability to to bridge uh, around or trade with or invest in and also um, secure 
Uh, I know that a lot of people are afraid of the term bridge when it comes to Mokamana, just because of the Nomad hack and whatnot. Um, do you guys plan on having s sort of like a, a relief fund, uh, just in case there is an issue similar to what Binance had proposed? Right, actually, a very good question. I will start from the second part. Uh, one of the uh, features of Loose Chain will be insurance fund that will be formed from part of cross-chain fees that we will take from every cross-chain operation. And this will be holding this insurance fund uh, that can be only used uh, under control of uh, the Blue Ship DAO to uh, actually support uh, some situations when uh, any uh, damage could be could happen to the funds that our protocol operates but of course this is not directly connected to seller and uh, returning to the first part of the question uh, our partnership with seller currently uh, is in that way that we support their rep tokens in both milkomeda c1 and day one and we have portfolios powered by seller when uh, you can invest uh, seller wrapped tokens, stable coins, and uh, some other tokens uh, like gas tokens from other ecosystems. And uh, also, these tokens are traded on Blue Ship. Of course, we cannot take any responsibility on the security because it's seller's part, but we know seller as a good and profound uh, bridge with a good technology and a good perspective on security. So that's why we list uh, seller tokens. Speaking about the nomad problem uh, that we had in the past, uh, actually Blue Shift uh, performed very well in that situation, and uh, no other sets on uh, Blue Shift protocol were affected by the nomad problem. Uh, and uh, of course, people who used nomad tokens uh, had some losses but the other portfolios were not affected. So our portfolios uh, have security features that uh, allow to somehow, uh, somehow uh, uh, differentiate risks and uh, make borders between uh, different uh, assets, making uh, your investments protected even if some of the tokens listed on Blue Shift uh, has problems. Awesome. Thank you for answering my questions. Can't wait to uh, try out the platform. All right. And then thanks, Manny, for coming up. We got Bitdano next. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I, I hit the button by accident and I'm eating right now, so I'll pass. Okay. No worries. Yeah, if anybody down there has any more questions, feel free to come up uh, and get up here and just ask whether that's about Wakamata, Blue Shift itself. Uh, there's a lot of speakers down there that maybe we can coax into coming up here and talk about uh, a few things. Uh, I see Pete here. If you want to come up and talk about anything, Pete, I'm curious how your experience has been on Milkomeda. Uh Cook time, how's it going? Ada Street Bits, what's up? Do you know um, if Feet works for Blue Shift or actually for Blue Shift? Yeah, 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 I know. So that's why I want to hear his experiences. <laughs> I'm sure he dives deeper if he's involved in uh, protocols. <laughs> I know I just kind of like briefly touch on it and I try to cover it in my newsletter and things like that. Uh, but I just, there's just so much out there and not enough time to do it all. No, that's true, that's true. We have uh, quite some, uh, quite a few events happening right now. We expand our partnership network and have a lot of uh, events. And you you can always hear Pete speaking. For example, like a week ago, we went to Cardano over coffee spaces uh, with Pete, with Igor, uh, basically the same crew. <laughs> that's what I call it, our cross-chain crew. So we went there to talk about the Cardano Index, the cross-chain, how it's going to be. Uh, so yeah, feel free uh, to listen to what uh, anyone had to say about it. 
Yeah, Cardano over coffee is a great place. Um, I feel like there's always so much like info going on. Like every day, there's just like projects, and it's like, yeah, I they just never... incredible. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. There's someone here. Rare evil, rare evolution. I see he was also on that space where we were uh, that I'm just talking about. Hi, rare. How are you doing? Yeah, so I guess uh, while we wait for more people to come up, if there's any other stuff you wanted to talk about, anything else coming up with Blue Shift or anything on Milkometa that uh, that's coming up soon. Yeah, we plan some really cool activity happening together with uh, Milkometa and Multichain. Oh, hi, Pyro. That's also another uh, person that I've seen on the Kadam over coffee. So how are you doing? Uh, do you have a question for us? <clears throat> yeah, um, I guess it would be more so with, uh, um, I, I remember you saying that you guys might end up doing your own like layer two solution for Cardano and, and EVMs. Uh, is that, is that true? Or did I just make that up just now? Cause I don't remember. Igor, could you please walk through, walk us through the blue shift uh, blockchain? Yeah. Yeah, so it's not layer two. It's uh, our separate settlement network, which we call Blue's Chain, that will not be a layer two, but it will be connected to all the chains that Blue Shift uh, will launch on. And uh, it will be connected, of course, with the all new Comeda networks. And uh, then it will be Kala and other networks. And in the future, we have plans also to connect directly to Cardano native, for example. So it's not a layer two, it's a, a settlement network where blue shift protocol logic will be uh, run in a decentralized way. Oh, you said decentralized. Um, okay. Cause it, all right. Nice. <laughs> I was I was on it. I, I was like, okay, yeah. So it's a database layer, probably like off chain. And then you said decentralized, which kind of threw me off. How is that? Yeah, there will be there will be no centralized database for sure. Uh, it will be our own validators network that will run loose chain nodes, uh, and uh, there will be tender mid consensus uh, between them. So it will be a, a true blockchain with a decentralized nature. Is this chain, uh, uh, a side, not a side chain or EVM? Is it its own settlement blockchain doing its own thing? The yeah. Our own settlement blockchain that will run blue shift uh, protocol logic. Is it EVM or is it, uh, like a Solana or is it like, like what, what, what chain it's what information on it's based on Cosmos SDK. Oh, Cosmos SDK. How, okay. So I know nothing about Cosmos. I see it a lot. A lot of people love it. Um, yeah, very good project. To, to, what's, so what's, what's great about Cosmos? Um, what differentiates Cosmos uh, comparatively to other chains? What's great about Cosmos for us is that uh, Cosmos has a brilliant open source SDK for building what they call application specific blockchains. And this is what loose, loose chain is. It is a, an application specific blockchain built directly to use, to be used inside with Lucif protocol to maintain cross chain transactions and cross chain portfolios. And that is very easy to use, and it has uh, actually theoretically proven uh, uh, tender mint consensus protocol, which has fast transaction time and uh, instant finality of transactions. So there are lots of good features there. Uh, how interoperable is the Cosmos chain um, compared to? could just plug in connections to other chains because obviously that's what you do and that's what i'm assuming is so yeah so how interoperable is the cosmos chain plugging into what's currently out on the market and then um other models yeah uh, i think uh, first we must uh, differentiate 
Cosmos uh, chain as a project and the chains built on top of Cosmos SDK. There are lots of them. And uh, for example, Binance chain uh, is also built on top of Cosmos SDK. So there are lots of projects built on, on this SDK and Blue's chain is one of them. It is not Cosmos chain as is. It is a separate chain built on the same technology. Yeah. That, that see that's really cool. Um, what does a multi-chain uh, dynamic look like now compared to like what your one-year, two-year perspective is? By multi-chain, you mean uh, cross-chain? Yeah, yeah, cross-chain, not multi-chain. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, of course, in the current market situation, uh, it's hard to make any forecasts, but uh, uh, we all are sure that cross-chain solutions and cross-chain world will be something that uh, will be in the focus in the next year. And uh, uh, I believe that this is something that will bring crypto market uh, up again. So I think the dynamics will be very fast and uh, very strong when uh, the solution is coming up and uh, when people will see uh, how easy and uh, quick it is to spoke uh, cross-chain assets, then I think uh, the traction will be very high. And again, I will not follow you had been in the beginning of our spaces here, but um, cross-chain protocol will allow for using aggregate liquidity so the whole uh, trading would be tapping into the aggregate reserve of all their uh, liquidity across all chains, which will definitely improve the capital efficiency, as well as uh, to allow for existence of the first ever cross-chain portfolios and for tokens that would be present in portfolios that are exposed to different chains, there would be no need for bridging or swapping them between different chains. So I, I love the capital efficiency. Um, what's your perspective on, on the, like the, the, the amount of tokens, uh, the governance tokens and what, what you think the government's going to do, um, as far as, uh, like for the U S of course, it's much different, you know, it's like, it's, it's harsh here, but at the same time, it's like, uh, you know, er everything's governance token. At, at what point is the governance token securities? What legal measures is Blue Shift looking into? Or, yeah, what legal measures is Blue Shift looking into? Well, yeah, you touched a very sensitive for a theme, actually. Uh, indeed, uh, all governance tokens uh, have some legal issues in several jurisdictions and uh, what we have now we have a legal opinion in uh, the jurisdiction of Estonia where uh, the legal entity of the blue shift now resides and uh, it states that uh, blues token our main token is not a governance token right now uh, it is used as a utility token and uh, actually uh, very soon, uh, it will have very strong utilities being a native token uh, in the blues chain, uh, where all the fees and the validator rewards will be paid in blues. So in essence, currently blues token is a utility token, which is uh, okay in most countries. And the governance feature needs further legal uh, elaboration, further legal work that uh, is just to come. It is not finished yet. Does the the, the governance token, not the, uh, do, do these tokens, um, because we're, we talk about, you know, purchasing a basket of tokens. Um, and right now the only assurance feels like layer ones, but at the same time, it's like there's liquidity everywhere. Um, what does the liquidity look like for these, these baskets, um, in the long run? Like, I don't know. There's like, it, never mind. <laughs> it's just, yeah. 
Uh, I just uh, again emphasize that uh, we will use aggregated liquidity. So all the chains that we will launch on, uh, people will be able to uh, add liquidity from that chains directly into our cross-chain portfolio without bridging. And the whole liquidity will be aggregated or summarized of all the uh, liquidity added on all the connected blockchains. So that's why uh, we anticipate that uh, the amount of liquidity will be higher than if we launched uh, separately on these chains without any connection. So if a market uh, is only trading uh, like a, like a queue of whatever, or like a, a, it has low liquidity, but the, the market value for that token is, is high. Um, uh, and you guys are, uh, have your own liquidity for the blue token. Um, and one of the tokens in the basket is illiquid, um, but still has a high market cap. How does that work for blue shift? Does it matter? Um, who, who takes the brunt of that, that, that liquidity fall? Well, well, uh, maybe there are several aspects in uh, this question. First, uh, if you speak about uh, blue ship portfolios, that they have uh, the target weights of all the tokens that uh, are uh, added to these portfolios, and uh, the blue ship protocol has possibility to automatically rebalance portfolios uh, to. Um, enforce that uh, tokens token liquidity in every portfolio corresponds to the target weights set for these tokens and uh, of course uh, this means that uh, somebody needs to add this liquidity and that's why we will uh, of course attract liquidity providers and we have several plans for how we will do this and the one of this is that uh, uh, campaign that uh, Sienna mentioned also uh, in about two weeks we will launch a referral program for liquidity providers uh, so that uh, users of our protocol will be able to invite their friends and uh, have some part of their rewards added to their own rewards so we will work uh, very focused uh, on uh, attracting liquidity to the protocol and by aggregating this liquidity we uh, plan to reach uh, the goals that we put in before the Lushev team so my uh, that's i love that um my last question is what has uh, the blue shift team created in the past and particularly the uh, the leadership's experience um, in fintech. Yeah, there were uh, several projects uh, in different uh, combinations of uh, partners. Uh, before we started uh, in DeFi, we had uh, projects uh, in enterprise decentralized solutions. Uh, built, uh, for example, a decentralized KYC solution for a consortium of uh, European banks. And then uh, we had uh, several uh, blockchain protocols where we participated as uh, development teams. And uh, before BlueShift, we also had uh, our own DeFi project named Liquify, uh, which was built on Binance Smart Chain and uh, that was also uh, launched into production and there were users there and actually blue shift uh, naturally grew up from that early protocol that we also uh, invented developed and uh, managed by the same team i said that was i'd also like to mention sorry uh one more thing is uh Igor and Kalev, the founder uh the creator of blue shift had previously worked uh, uh as a project leader for charles hoskinson uh, and he was in charge of the project uh focused on a decentralized consortium funding for cardano's community which had actually became the catalyst project and in that capacity, Igor had learned quite a lot uh, in depth about Cardano, its values, and its uh, 
fundamental, um, basically core things that uh, led us to a conclusion to actually start uh, piloting our solution on Cardano. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I love the information. Thanks, thank Spyro. you. Yeah, those are really good questions, Pyro. Thanks for coming up. I think that's one thing I enjoy about like Twitter Spaces the most is that like uh, sometimes people have like really good questions that you know you wouldn't really think of just on your own, and then they just come up and like ask them, and then you get that detail that a lot of people need. All right, but we have reached our hour mark. So if there's any last things uh, Blue Shift would like to put out before we start wrapping up the space. We will be launching a very interesting Christmas uh, liquidity provision competition together with Milkometer and Milkchain with a good price fund and, and good, uh, good idea uh, behind it of connecting two ecosystems, the Alberan and Cardano. As well as keep an eye on the launch of the referral program, on the launch of the analytics uh, dashboard. And of course, we are all waiting and soon we'll start to come down for the cross-chain protocol to come and just set a new standard for how the cross-chain operations should be like. That's from me. Thank you very much. And then Blue Shift has a Discord and like Telegram and stuff like that. Is there any like yeah, events or anything that goes on there? Yeah, like we have a uh, Discord, we have uh, Telegram, Twitter, we also have YouTube, and we also have interesting podcast, which is um, basically brought to you by Ernst Young together with Blue Shift, where uh, we give a unique commentary on all the events that take place in the crypto space. Um, the podcast is called Late Night DeFi, so it's pretty easy to find. Just put it on Google, Late Night DeFi. And uh, yeah, we do it uh, weekly or bi-weekly. And uh, there you may see Pete together with uh, Head of uh, Emerging Technologies at uh, Ernst Young and uh, having a dialogue about what is going on in the space and what does it all really mean. So not just be mentioning the news, but giving a good um good insight, information, insight view into what it means. So everyone, please check it, uh, follow us and, uh, yeah, add me at, uh, blue shift and, uh, reach out to us in DMs. Thank you very much. Awesome. Yeah. I didn't even know about that podcast. That's pretty cool. I'll have to look into that one. I always need something to listen to when I'm like driving around. Uh, though sometimes I listen to spaces, <laughs> but then like, sometimes like people will like call you out and they'll be like, Hey, what's going on? It's like, I'm driving and I can't like say anything or click anything yeah right and there's a lot of uh, twitter spaces as well as a lot of uh just um youtubers that simply talk that all oh, this had happened or that had happened or even now uh, uh like a newsletter with all the key events but uh what we think was missing is the commentary on what is really going on and what it all means uh for us for example the news like um uh, like i don't know Instagram allows uh, adding your NFTs to your stories. Sounds like, wow, big title, Facebook, uh, Meta, whatever. But like, do you really want to give access to all the transactions to Meta? <laughs> do you really want to give give all this to Mark Zuckerberg for him to make a good use of it? <laughs> yeah, that definitely does bring up some like good points. Because uh, I saw like even like Telegram, I guess, is adding their own wallet in there too. But then now your wallet might be linked probably to your phone number. And then, you know, you're, I don't know. Things get kind of interesting with all that stuff. Uh, but Donna, you got your hand up. I start to receive a few questions here in a private from people that know me. Uh, guys, so you can find all the links on Blue Shift Twitter account. In the bio description, there is a link tree. Just click on it and you get easy access to all our channels, podcasts, articles, and whatnot. Awesome. Yeah, so if you want to know more about Blue Shift, go ahead and reach out there. Uh, Bidano, you had one last thing? Yeah, I just want to know if you guys had a roadmap when you're adding meld and 
all the other big coins on Cardano? And um, are you going to use AI when when it's uh, bigger? Well, of course, we have uh, a lot of plans, uh, but now we are focused on our cross chain protocol. And then uh, we are thinking about launching on Cardano Native and also launching on some other big ecosystems that could be, for example, Polygon or even Ethereum. So, here, um, I think uh, we will announce these plans early next year. Awesome, thanks. All right, well, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, I do these spaces like every week with different projects. I'll be talking to a new project next week. Uh, I also have some stuff in the works for like just like a different DeFi like, space. Uh, so if you're interested in any of that, give me a follow uh, or subscribe to my newsletter if you want that information too. I do drop news about Milkamata and like this blue shift stuff. I'll put that in my newsletter. Uh, that way people can kind of keep up to date. If you don't like to get on Twitter all the time like I do, you can just get it in your mailbox, kind of read through it and see what interests you and then kind of go on with your week instead of uh, living here. <laughs> but thanks everybody for coming out. Thank you everyone. Thank you for being generous with your time and uh, happy to be here. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you very much.